so good morning to all so today's session we will discuss the combustion stages of i nice sa engine that is a petrol engine we will discuss what are the different combustion stages so today's objectives mainly include an introduction to combustion as engine a small introduction then the theoretical combustion in a c engine then the actual combustion stages of a c engine then different factors or the effect of engine variables on ignition lag and the effect of engine variables on flame propagation so these are the topics of discussion today so let's check what is combustion in an ic engine particularly in sa engine so you might have some basic idea about combustion so combustion is the oxidation of fuel to form heat energy and other products so what happens in combustion is the carbon and hydrogen atoms of the fuel will be oxidized with the help of oxygen in air to form products like carbon monoxide carbon dioxide hydrogen water etc and this will liberate heat energy which so this will result in increase in pressure as well as temperature which is utilized in the power stroke so combustion means combustion is a chemical reaction in which the fuel elements like carbon hydrogen combine with oxygen in air liberating heat energy and this will cause an increase in temperature and pressure of the gas and the theory of combustion is very very complex since it involves the gaseous phase of air and fuel and the production of heat energy turbulent conditions etc this is a very complex subject and not much knowledge is available for explaining this phenomenon in detail and in a sa engine you already know a homogeneous mixture of air and fuel is prepared either using a carburetor or using a fuel injector in the inlet manifold just like a pfa engine and it will be mixed before entering the cylinder so in a conventional sa engine their fuel mixture is prepared before entering the cylinder and at the combustion is initiated at the end of combustion stroke by a spark plug using the help of a spark plug we are giving electric discharge so that is a starting point of combustion in sa engine so where the sa engine combustion start it will start the point or the time at which the spark is given by the spark plug and we all did know the a flame front develops in an sa engine the combustion is by the traveling of this flame front or the spreading of the flame front throughout the mixture and what happens is in the flame front it's a narrow zone separating the combustion products on one side and the fresh charge to be burned on the other side so if you look at the flame front in one instant one side of that flame front it will be already burned gas the product of combustion other side of the mixture we will have the fresh charge to be burned and this flame propagation cause heat transfer and diffusion to the adjacent layer of unburned mixture so this is a, what happening inside the combustion of sa engine now let's see what are the combustion stages so before that we must understand the theoretical p theta diagram of a sa engine combustion so in to depict the combustion we will be using pressure crank angle diagram p theta diagram so in the y axis we will have the pressure and x axis we will have the crank angle that is theta so this can be achieved with the help of a pressure sensor so if in your engine you have got a pressure sensor and you got a piston displacement sensor and a display unit 
you can obtain this p theta diagram so this is the theoretical p theta diagram so it is very easy you can see here this is compression stroke pressure energy increases so at the point b we are giving the spark so theoretically the spark will be given at tdc when the piston is at top dead center so as the combustion starts it completes at c where we are obtained a very high pressure then expansion takes place so this is a theoretical p theta diagram so you can see that in theoretical p theta diagram the entire combustion completes in one step from b to c and that also at constant volume so when the piston is at tdc itself the combustion is completed so a typical this is a typical theoretical pressure angle crank angle diagram and a to b is compression b to c is the combustion and c to d is expansion so the entire pressure rise during combustion takes place at constant volume at tdc in a single step so this we are completed in a single step with constant volume but this is not the actual case the actual engine will be entirely different the actual engine it cannot be completed in one stage and also it will not be at that constant volume so sir ricardo is known as the father of engine research he was the first man to find out this three stages of combustion in sa engine so with the help of an actual p theta diagram obtained from an engine he introduced these three different stages of combustion in sa engine so let's see what are three stages of combustion in an actual sa engine so this is the p theta diagram of an actual engine so pressure is here from starting from some one bar to some around 30 bar and this is tdc so you can see here three stages are marked in this first one is ignition lag second one is the propagation of flame and third one is the after burning so a to b the first stage is from a to b second stage is from b to c and finally we have c to d so let's check how these stages are identified and what are happening in these stages first stage is ignition lag so what is ignition lag ignition lag refers to a preparation phase in which the growth and development of a self propagating nucleus of flame takes place so what is happening in a to b is it is the lag it denotes a lag or it denotes a time required for the development of a hollow nucleus of flame so at the point a we are giving the spark plug it is a starting point of combustion so at from point a to b a hollow nucleus of flame will be developed the point a is the spark given here it is at 20 degree before tdc so in an actual engine we will be giving spark before tdc here it is 20 degree before tdc and the point b so how you will distinguish point b the end of this first stage so it is a point at which the combustion line departs from the motoring line so here you can see another dotted curve which represents the motoring line or also known as the compression line that is if the engine is not fired or if the combustion does not takes place the pressure variation will be like this so it will not reach here so it will go down if the combustion is not there so that point at which this compression line departs from the combustion line is known as the point b and this stage is a chemical process in which the rate of reaction depends upon temperature pressure nature of fuel etc and only 7% of the mixture is found to burn in this first stage so it is a small stage in which only the 7 percentage of the total mixture is burned so what is happening so first stage is ignition lag so it represents the time or lag required for the development of a hollow nucleus of flame 
and it is due to the chemical pro reactions or it's a chemical process in which the rate of reaction depends on these several factors. Now let's see what the second stage which is the most important stage that is the flame propagation. So first it is from B to C so it is denoted by the B to C in this figure. So it is a physical process so not like a chemical reaction it is a physical process it is a traveling of flame from point at the near area near the spark plug to the other end of the combustion chamber. So already at point B we have a stable flame and from B to C the flame travels from one place to other. And in this, at this stage we have a considerable rise in pressure. So this stage is differentiated from other stage where we have a measurable rise in pressure is seen. So at, from point B we can see the, there is a measurable rise in pressure. And point C is the maximum peak pressure of the cycle. So it is around some 25 bar here. So flame propagates at a constant velocity and the rate of heat release depends on the turbulence intensity and mixture composition. So this stage will be mostly depend on the turbulence inside the engine cylinder. So if the turbulence is more, this flame can travel with more speed. Then what about the third stage? So already up to point C, the flame has completed its travel. The piston starts expanding, that is why the pressure is decreasing. But even though the combustion will again sustain for some more time, this is due to certain chemical adjustment like reassociation. So what do we mean by reassociation? So already we have the combustion products like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon or something like that. So it will even though the flame travel is completed, this will be have some reactions and they will produce release some more heat. So that is represented as reassociation. So the C to D is known as after burning, which is due to the chemical adjustment like reassociation, which is sustaining even after the passing of flame. But the expansion stock starts from here. So there is no pressure rise during this stage. So you can see there is no considerable pressure rise. Pressure is decreasing. That is because already the expansion stroke is started. And only about 10% of heat is liberated in this stage. So first stage we have around 7% of heat liberation. Total mixture burning. The last stage is around 10%. So remaining 80 or more than 80% mixture is burned in the second stage. That is flame propagation. Now this is an actual video which is based on the work research work carried on Imperial College London. So what they have done is they have used some high speed videography and they have used the transparent optical engine to physically see this what is happening inside the combustion of an SC engine. So let's see what is happening in an actual combustion video. So this is what happening for so first one is for gasoline that is first one is for petrol second one is for ethanol biofuel then last one is for normal butanol. So you can see here the center here is a spark plug at the center of the combustion chamber so this circle represents the combustion chamber. So you can see here initially there is a time required initially a time is required for the development of a flame Init some time is required for the first development of flame which represents the ignition lag so once that flame is developed it travels through the entire combustion chamber so you can see here and it is different for different fuels the color the speed and the type of motion etc different for these three types of fuel. So this is what happening inside a SA engine. Now let's see what are the effect of engine variables on ignition lag. So the first stage how the different engine variables will be affecting. 
let's check the temperature and pressure of the gas what happens when the temperature and pressure inside the gas increases so we already know the rate of chemical reactions normally the rate of chemical reaction increase rapidly at high temperature and it increases in pressure also speed of the chemical reaction but to a small extent so ignition lag we already know ignition lag is a stage which happening due to a chemical reactions for the development of a nucleus of flame therefore that time required decrease by increasing the pressure and temperature of the gas so ignition lag reduce by increasing the pressure and temperature of the gas and therefore increasing the compression ratio increasing the intake temperature and pressure and retarding the spark time will tend to reduce ignition lag so all these factors will increase the pressure and temperature inside the cylinder so if you increase combustion ratio the pressure and temperature inside the gas will increase and if you increase the intake temperature and pressure by using a supercharger or a turbocharger again the pressure and temperature will increase and the retarding the spark timing also increase the pressure and temperature so all this will reduce the ignition lag then what about the mixture ratio air fuel ratio so maximum temperature is achieved when the mixture is slightly rich that is 10 percentage rich than the stoichiometric ratio so already you have studied stoichiometric ratio is the chemically correct air fuel ratio for complete burning of fuel so if theoretically at this point we will get maximum temperature but practically we will get we are getting maximum temperature for a slightly rich that is 10 percent more rich mixture so at this point we will have the minimum ignition lag so ignition lag corresponding to this mixture ratio is the smallest one then fuel type so if you are using a higher self ignition temperature of fuel longer will be the ignition lag so if the fuel is having a high self ignition temperature the ignition lag will be more and another thing is turbulence when you turbulence is directly proportional to engine speed so when engine speed increases turbulence generally increases and ignition lag increase linearly with the engine speed so yeah when the engine speed increases the ignition lag also increases and another thing is if you have used the excessive turbulence near the area of spark plug this flame develop development of flame will be unstable and so to avoid this the spark plug is normally arranged in a small recess in the wall of the combustion chamber so you can see the spark plug is inserted in a recess inside the in a cavity or in a depression inside the combustion chamber to avoid this to avoid the excessive turbulence near the area of spark plug because it will be the result in an unstable development of the nucleus of flame then another factor is the electrode gap the spark plug electrode we are using two electrodes in spark plug and in this gap between that electrode the if it is too small this cooling of flame nucleus will occur quenching means keep cooling of this flame nucleus will occur and if the compression ratio is less and the load is less we require more electrode gap so for example in the compression ratio of 7 electrode gap of 0 0.625 millimeter is required so that gap is very very important if the gap is too small this first ignition lag will be more and this quenching of flame nucleus will happen now let's see what are the effect of engine variables on the flame speed that is refers to the second stage of combustion so compression ratio already you know compression ratio increases the temperature and pressure of gas at the end of compression increases so that reduce the mixture preparation time and which makes combustion faster so when the compression ratio increases therefore it increases the flame speed so normally when the compression ratio increases the flame speed also increases and intake temperature and pressure so that is similar to compression ratio when you increase the intake temperature and pressure using a supercharger or turbocharger etc 
it will increase the flame speed so increasing the intake temperature and pressure increase the temperature and pressure of gas at the end of compression and similar to compression ratio this flame speed is increased so both these have the similar effect on flame speed so if compression ratio increases flame speed increases if the intake temperature and pressure increases again the flame speed will be increased then another thing air fuel ratio so we are using a lean mixture lean mixture means you are using more air less fuel compared to stoichiometric ratio the thermal energy release will be less so which re result in low flame speed and temperature so if you are using a lean mixture it will result in low flame speed and if you are using a very rich mixture very rich mixture means you will have more fuel particle particles compared to air so that will result in incomplete combustion and again less thermal energy and flame speed will have so that means if you are using a lean mixture their flame speed will be less and also if you are using a very rich mixture again the flame speed will be less so that means the flame speed is maximum for a 10 percentage rich mixture than the stoichiometric ratio so this is the mixture strength which will give the maximum flame speed that is 10 percentage rich mixture then very important factor that will affect the flame speed is turbulence so the turbulent motion of mixture intensifies the process of heat transfer and mixing of burned and unburned portion of the flame front so already we have discussed the flame front one side we have burned mixture other side we have unburned mixture and this flame front is traveling so if the turbulence is increased this heat transfer between this will increase and the mixing of this will increase so all this will result in increase in flame speed so flame speed increase proportional to the turbulent velocity And how this turbulence is increased can increase in an engine. Two methods is there. One is turbulence in the incoming mixture is generated during the admission of mixture through a comparatively narrow sections of intake pipe valve, etc. Right? Suction stroke. So during suction stroke itself, you can increase the turbulence. How? By proper designing, by narrowing the inlet valve, inlet manifold, etc. You can generate turbulence during the suction stroke. Or otherwise it can be increased at the end of combustion stroke by suitable design of combustion chamber so this will we will discuss detail in the design of combustion chamber part so we have several design for a change in combustion chamber and in that we will discuss how that will affect the turbulence and another thing is the engine speed increases so higher the engine speed greater the turbulence so automatically the flame speed increases so increasing the engine speed will increase the flame speed due to the increase in turbulence then what about engine load what about the temperature and pressure when engine load increases it increase so increase in engine load result in increase in cycle pressure and temperature so again the flame speed will increase so again increasing the engine load will also increase the flame speed and the last one is engine size so engine size will not have any that much effect on the flame speed but when the size increases the time required for flame to travel from spark plug region to the other end will be more so that is the effect of engine size so engine size does not have much effect on flame propagation but in large engines the flame has to travel a long distance so if it is the engine size is very very large like stationary engines so this has to travel a large distance so we have to flame speed must or we have to give more time so the engine must be operated at low speed so the large engines must be operated at low speeds because of this the engine the as flame has to travel a longer distance so it requires more time to complete combustion so this is a general idea of how the factors will affect these flame speed ignition lag etc 
so you have to be very very under, understand this concept because this will have the effect on the coming sessions like knocking the next session will be on knocking what is knocking etc so the, that is depend on these factors and also the combustion number design also depends on these several factors so thank you